anyway, uh, let's the real get reason here. why we're here. Yeah, let's get on the subject. Is <laughs> marriage a bad investment? We could have stayed there for a minute. I would have thought I would enjoy that one. Go ahead. Well, enjoy what? I would enjoy that. Oh, one. dissecting me? Do you want to come back and have a dissecting martini episode? No, we can I don't do that. Fight, cause I feel like, dude, you're ready to get violent. I, f- I felt violent tendencies coming for you. I thought you were gonna smack somebody. No, I don't. I don't want to get involved. In no, we can have yeah, a, we can have an that, entire episode. That'd, that'd be one awkward, hour. That'll be an awkward ride home. One. Yeah. We can have a one hour episode. Of just martini yo, is martini. Never spoke again. So, what is what what? What makes you tick, Martini? So, Please, so uh, everybody wants to know. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to do this because I'm a private person. But I'm willing to do this. I'm willing to do this. But yo, we understand. We're gonna, we're gonna, whatever we're gonna talk about, we're gonna leave in that hour. Ain't no, ain't no. After that, we're just gonna leave everything. So, in that so you want, so you want to have a dissecting Let's Martini it, episode? Man. Let's do it, man, man, man. Bed, love, bed, bed, love, <laughs> beyond. beyond, bed, love, beyond, bed, love, beyond. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? Welcome to Bed Love Beyond, the podcast for the hopeful and the hater in us to discuss sex, love, and whatever's clever with like-minded people like you who are also in limbo with love. Like us. Think, whoa. <laughs> I'm okay. Jennifer. I'm, I'm Jennifer. I'm Martini. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Martini, too. There we go. <laughs> uh, today's episode is episode 118, 444, the story of MJ. And Michael, if you, <laughs> if you have a topic you want us to explore or have any questions you want to ask, you can write us at beloveyond at gmail.com or text us at 201 862 8bed. That is 201 862 And today is a packed house, a super packed house. There's mad people in this room. <laughs> Yeah, super fans of the show. No, not super fans, super friends. Oh, that too. Okay. Aren't you nerd or nerdish? Don't you get the reference? I, I do. <laughs> Am I using it correctly? <laughs> oh, man, yes. And we have today, we have April. Hey, guys. And we have Bridget. Hello. And the return of Randy. <laughs> what's going on what's going on what's going on all right um yeah so april this is your 10th appearance on the show really yes Damn. yeah the last episode you were on was episode 113 what's in a name i now pronounce you mr and mrs uh <laughs> and then we have bridget it's your seventh appearance t- today seventh yeah seventh How'd you got so quick <laughs> How'd you your game so quick, Bridget? Because we had like... I've been on a lot recently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I took a nice two-year break in there. <laughs> yeah, and the, your last episode was episode 116, The Man-Child, Kid at Heart, Admiring or Adult Wanted. And Randy is your seventh appearance today, and your last episode was episode 106, Is Marriage a Bad Investment? Last time I was here, I think me and April were tied up one. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Wasn't gonna let that happen, Randy. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So, um, so to go to go on that that last episode, this is a reconvening of like the same the same people, obviously with uh Bridget uh here, and we're going to continue that uh that uh discussion that we had in the beginning because uh bridget you 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 listened to that today right I did. so you'll have a lot of stuff to talk oh, about that was a juicy episode <laughs> so that's good that's good i definitely want to hear your uh perspective i'm glad that you uh listened to it as well april, april wasn't here for the um no, she wasn't here for the beginning of that episode she no no yeah, yeah 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 she walked in at the tail end so did you ever get a chance right. to hear it? i listened to it oh okay yeah. that's okay. crazy it, it right kinda, yes it got kind of so be prepared i it's gonna be kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. Be Fasten your seatbelts, everybody. Yeah. So first, we, before we get into any daily dish or any of that stuff, uh, Jennifer needs to uh, share a story. It is my daily dish. Oh, that's true. Okay. So we'll get into daily dish, and Jennifer will start it. Oh, so about the blog. Yes. Oh, I was like, I have another story. <laughs> well, so I blogged the other day. Um, but since most of you don't read our blog. I'm assuming. <laughs> Could be wrong. I will tell the story. So my brother sent me a text um, Saturday morning. And it was just a screenshot of like a page from like his high school. 
and it said, uh, I regret to inform the group that so-and-so has passed away. And so-and-so happens to be my stalker. So, or restraining order boy, as we have so faithfully referred to him online. And uh, I kind of sat there for a minute. And I was just like, hmm. And then I was just like, I texted him back. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, what happened? And uh, he was like, I don't know. I don't care. I'm not that invested in it. And then he's like, his stalking days are over. I was like, okay. That's your Aries response, all right. Or maybe that's just the brotherly response or just my brother. I don't know. Um, and then, like, a couple of his friends who are, like, mutual friends of mine were, like, putting up different things. And, you know, so, like, one of his friends um, was like, yo, it's crazy. And I was like, what happened? And he was just like, oh, it was his heart. And I was like, mm, that sounds like bullshit because, like, I was there when he had his heart surgery. He Not that having a valve replaced is, like, small beans but it's in the grand scheme of open heart surgeries one of the more common ones and he went to a very like affluent hospital in New York City he had a really great doctor and he was surviving pretty well without even having the valve fixed um but he had a lot of issues and he was doing a lot of drugs and doing a lot of alcohol well drinking a lot of alcohol I mean the drugs I couldn't really confirm I know he was smoking weed and I understand that weed is not really a drug um, but it is when you're, like, on bipolar medication and things of that nature. So, like, I didn't know how to feel for, like, the first day or two. I was just like, oh, this is weird. Like, I know I should be upset. So, I was, like, going through my pictures because he was like, oh, my God, you know. I saw him the other day. We were face like, my friend, mutual friend told me, he's like, we are FaceTiming. He just got an apartment. His mom helped him get. He's like, I told him he didn't look good. Whatever, whatever. Um, he's like, but he told me he was fine. But that was, like, his thing. Like, he would hide his addiction all the time. Like, he'd come over with, like, a little, like, uh, gym, you know, those, like, gym pull sack basketball bags, whatever they're called. And, like, he'd, like, have, like, a fifth of something in there. And I'd be like, what is this dude doing? You know, and I thought, like, in the beginning, like, oh, you know, he's just anxious about having to have open heart surgery. I had surgery as a kid, so I can't imagine being, like, an adult now. I'd probably be, like wanting to do anything to, like, numb the pain. And I didn't really know him from, like, 13 to 35 or 34. So I don't know what he did for, like, the last 20 years. Um, He said he experimented with a lot of drugs, but I guess most kids did. I don't know. I didn't, but I didn't because I was terrified. But, so, like, I didn't really think much of it. And I guess according to his mom that, like, he... He kind of went downhill after he had a stroke, which was, like, way before I met him. And now he was just kind of, like, a lost soul. But, I don't know. Everyone's kind of just like, oh, he had a bad heart. And that's just, like, really pissing me off for some reason. I'm just kind of like, mm, I have a bad heart. I was born with it. And, like, knock on Ikea wood. That, like, <laughs> you know, as long as I keep doing what I'm doing, I'll be okay. Like, it, other things take into effect. Like, even these famous people who die, you know, they're like, oh, he died of cardiac arrest, or he died of this, and it's like, mm, like, all these, like, rockers and stuff. It's like, yeah, but he also drank and did a lot of heroin. Like, let's not ignore that. And I know his mom, like, set up, like, a fund me thing for, like, NAMI, like, where you can, like, send donations, which is the National Alliance of Mental Illness. Um, and she kind of, like, wrote something. Well, my mom told me because she has me blocked. Um... She, like, wrote something like, oh, you know, everyone knew him as, like, a loving... Most people knew him as a loving, caring, like, good-hearted person. He was very artistic. He was an amazing artist. Um, But, you know, a lot of people knew that he also had a dark side, and he was never the same after his stroke. And she's like, I kind of felt his passing before it happened. So I think she kind of always knew, like... I think parents kind of know, like, if your kid is kind of, like, a lost cause... I don't know. I guess, like, the social worker in me was like, there's more you could have done. But it is what it is. It sucks. I hope he's at peace. That's all you can really hope for. Because, obviously, like, if you're going through all that and you feel like you need to, like, compensate with alcohol or whatever, like, you're kind of, you know, tortured. He never bothered me post the restraining order other than the one time he asked for me to drop it because he wants to move to Poland and get married, which I denied because... He didn't take the anger management classes. And he didn't take it seriously. So I said no. Which I don't regret. 
Because I don't think any of this has any effect on that. Um, so it's weird. It doesn't really like. It do, it doesn't. It doesn't affect me like I think that it should because he was already like, not to use the word dead, but like dead from my life. Like after having to go to court and like bear your soul and an embarrassment to a room full of people you don't know and you, um, you kind of like emotionally cut that person off. So I was just more struggling with like, shouldn't I be upset? And I was just like, oh. I didn't cry or anything. I was just kind of like, oh, it's weird. Like, it sucks. So, and like, I was like trying to like invoke some kind of like emotion because I felt like weird about it. I felt like numb about it. And I was like going through pictures and I was like, oh, we were really like chummy together. I'm not going to deny that. But then I got to like all the screenshots of the text messages and I was like, Jesus Christ. Like, you were just off. This is just something that was like not right there. And it was crazy. I don't know. So, I don't have anything to worry about anymore, and I guess now I'm just kind of curious if I'm going to get something from court. But other than that, it is kind of just interesting and informative news. Yeah, I remember a little bit before we started the podcast, you know, he was in both our lives, and we, him and I <laughs> definitely got off on the wrong foot, you know. <laughs> He's like, oh, fuck that martini. Yeah, well, <laughs> what did sa- martini do? He, he said some more colorful uh, language, <laughs> <laughs> you know. I, th- I think it was me that he dropped the N-word on, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, obviously, the I That's think- That's kind of when I was like, oh, no, we don't do this. You yeah. can't be in my circle. And the first time that I met him was at the courthouse, and you were like, please, can you bl- just please come with me? And I'm like, all right, cool, no problem. And I just- saw everything and i'm just like man and and then of course you know the infamous voice both voicemails that you had to play yeah and him threatening your life and him crying and all that stuff and i'm just like whoa and then it was just like a whole ray of emotions yeah like, my mom's like my mom was like oh i still have the messages he left me because like he would like curse my mom out and be like oh you know like are you why won't you fucking tell jen to call me or whatever and then he'd be like oh i'm so sorry like i was crying all night i'm so sorry i spoke to you like that like it was just this bipolar yeah thing and like i guess in the beginning like i chose not to see it because i was like oh this is my friend that i want to help him through this ordeal and like i was telling somebody else like she she dated someone as an adult that she liked when she was a kid and I think when that happens you kind of have like this fantasy in your head about who the person is Mm -hmm. or who the person was and you Mm -hmm. want them to be that as an adult Mm -hmm. and like now that you're an adult you're like oh yay like we can be adults and do the damn thing like I don't have to like have a crush on you like when I was 10 yeah but then like you're not the same people yeah you know so it's weird and I just attributed all his like craziness at the time to Oh my god, this guy's about to have like his chest ripped open. Mm. That's fucking crazy. Mm. He must really be like losing his shit. And it was weird. And then like progressively it got worse and worse and worse. And then I thought it was going to get better after the surgery. And it didn't. It got worse. And then like I don't know if I... I didn't really think what was going to happen after we stopped talking. I just figured it'd be somebody else's problem and maybe he'd get help or whatever. Yeah. Um... Yeah, and I was definitely, I wasn't even really concerned about the stuff that he would say to me or stuff like that. I just didn't like the positions that he would put you in. Because I remember, like, you were telling me that he, um, like, called you to pick him up at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning from, like, a really bad neighborhood just because he was, like, just stranded there. And then you found out that he was getting drugs. And, and I was like, what? Like, what? And His mom would be like, oh, can you just get him? I'm like, why is it my responsibility? Yeah. And I think that's what she did. I think she kind of put it off on anybody else. And um, I guess in his situation, it's a little different. But mm. I guess there was a part of me that was like putting my social worker hat on this week. And I was just like l- looking on all his friends, like post shit about, oh, my God, we were supposed to do this. We had all these plans, blah, 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 blah. blah. And I'm like, yo, how good of friends are you if you don't really like pay attention to your friend and be like, yo, something's going on with you. Like, what are you yeah. doing? Mm hmm. You know, and some of these kids are doing the same shit, so, like, it is what it is. But, like, if you have somebody in that situation, like, and then I think maybe it's more of a man thing where you don't want to say, yo, bro, you need to get help. Yeah. But I think, like, it's important to because don't sit there and be, like, crying when he's dead to be like, oh, my God, I can't believe this happened. How did this happen? 
You know, like, yo, you obviously knew something was wrong with dude for a long time, and everyone wants to just brush it off or be like, all right, yo, you're just acting silly now. It's it's whatever. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. That was, like, my only beef. Like, everyone was kind of just like, this is terrible. How did this happen? He's so young. It's like, yo, I'm sure at some point you knew he was drunk off his ass, like, all the time. Mm-hmm. So... You don't just even say, like, yo, you really probably should chill out. Didn't you have heart surgery? Yeah. Or it's fucking Monday afternoon. Why are you drunk? hmm You know? And mm-hmm. I don't know. I think his mom kind of dropped the ball, too, but I don't know. I just hope he's at peace, and I feel bad for his his mom, but his mom seems to be okay with it. I think his brothers are kind of, like, struggling, but his mom seems to be, like, I think maybe as a parent, I'm not a parent, so maybe... There's a part of her that does feel at peace now because she was obviously probably constantly worrying yeah. to a degree yeah, yeah, yeah. about what's going to happen. Absolutely. So, yeah. I don't know. It is what it is. Yeah. Not to be, like, cold about it, but, I mean, I don't know. I think, like, if Brooklyn died, maybe I'd have a little bit more emotion. Probably not much more. But, I don't know. I think you can feel bad for somebody without being upset. Yeah. I think it's two different things. Like, you feel bad for the situation without being upset about it. There was part of me that just thought that I should have been, like, really upset. And a lot of people were calling me, like, oh, my God, are you okay? And I'm just like, yeah, is that okay? Like, am I supposed to be upset? Like, and then all day I was, like, kind of obsessing about, like, wait, am I supposed to feel something else? Mm-hmm. Like, shit. Because I don't know if I do. I, I really didn't know, and now it's, like, well, it's Monday. You know, people are like, oh, are you going to go to the service thing? And I was like, there's still an active restraining order. Yeah. Like, I can't get arrested. Yeah. I am really interested, though, if I'm going to get, like, a something. cease and desist letter or um, something. You, I think you got to get something. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. But, any, but yes, um, please go to uh, our website and read Jennifer's um, Jennifer's blog. I was sitting in the car at Toys R Us. <laughs> I was like, because I was like overly thinking about it. Right. I hear you. And there wasn't enough good sales there. Although uh, I do have fidget spinners upstairs if everybody needs one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> good segue. Um, um, <laughs> April, anything going on? Daily Dish? Uh, no, same. Same. Just work. Family April went to stuff. Mario Karts. I don't know if that's what it's called, but yeah, I don't think they can. It's called le- they, Ni- Niagara Speedway. Yeah, they can't legally call it that. Yeah. <laughs> they just model it kind of after. It's really cool though. That's cool. Like, drive the go karts around a ramp. And you and did it. You hills did. and yeah, that's dope. And it has the little like. Who do who did who did you dress up as? Dress up. Yeah, you could wear costumes, can't you? Yeah, yeah. I think people did, but everybody was in regular clothes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wait, that's a thing. Yeah, yeah, they supply they supply the stuff for you, so so it could look like Mario Kart. Holy shit! I didn't see any costumes. Oh, I, well, I know there's. I think some people wore their own. There, there's uh, multiple places that do it, so maybe oh, okay. maybe not your um, yeah. n- maybe not that one, but right, yeah, I've, but yeah, I've definitely seen it. Yeah, because I think I saw a little YouTube video of it, and people dressed up and went, but I mm-hmm. think it was their mm-hmm. costumes, but mm-hmm. they dressed up and went. Yeah. Okay. It was fun though. That's cool. They have a whole little. I don't know if anybody's ever been to Niagara Falls, but they have a whole little like area. Mm-hmm. There's like a little. It's like a little amusement park and hotels and restaurants and bars and an aquarium and a wax you museum. The New, York, and, you New York side or Canadian side? The Canadian side. Yeah. yeah. So it was a whole thing up there. It's very nice. Wish awesome. I could have stayed mm. a couple days. Wait till you go to Montreal. You're gonna be like, I'm packing my bags. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Randy. Any daily dish going on? Nah, man. Um, my life is boring, bro. I just I work. I work okay. Yeah, nothing. Um, not nothing going on really. Mm-hmm. Did you ever talk to the ex girlfriend again? Uh, briefly. Nothing. Nothing. Like we didn't get into no real deep. We want to get back type conversation. Yeah, but are you gonna, like friendly? Mm-hmm. You don't do that. Nah, it's, we don't speak like that. We probably oh. speak once every three or four weeks if that mm-hmm. so I mean it's I, I spoke to her the other day she was getting ready to go to Trinidad but it was real brief because like she had ran to my mom so I reached, I reached out to her and my grandmother had passed but prior to that we didn't speak for like a month so yeah I think that ship has passed hmm. that ship has sailed so okay yeah. 
Bridget, what's going on with you? A uh, whole lot of nothing. <laughs> um, just working, really. Um, <clears throat> not hearing back from men. Mm. Um, so... <laughs> The Bronx? Yeah. yeah. I think he may have dropped the ball again. What so. the fuck, man? I know. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, maybe I'll get another eloquent letter. <laughs> oh, maybe. I don't know. I um, We were supposed to hang out last week, but I was really sick. If you remember, the last time I was on the podcast, I had, like, my voice was all out of it. So I was still sick, and um, I apologized. I was like, hey, I'm sorry I dropped the ball. Um, but, you know, I'm these are the days I'm in the city next week. When are you available? And crickets. So... <laughs> Um, he could be mad at me. Maybe he thinks I was faking it and I wasn't really sick, but I was. So I felt like you were like my back hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go to the zoo. Yeah. Uh, no, fuck that. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens. Um, and where were you on Sunday? Oh, I was at, uh, New York city pride. It looked awesome. It was amazing. <laughs> it was really good. Um, yeah, last year. Ironically, last year I got sick while I was at Pride, so I didn't even get to stay the whole day. But today, I got this year I got to actually, you know. It looked like it was really know. fun. It was. The weather was nice. Um, and it looks like they open it for like everybody. Like they're not like, um, you're straight, go home. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's yeah. That's it, and it's also, it's hard to tell. Like you, I mean, mm-hmm. there are people who'll be in like opposite sex relationships there, but you don't. I mean, you don't know their story, and you don't. Right. I mean, like they could be bisexual. Like you. You, you don't know. Right. Right. It's right. New York City. You just come out of yeah, your house and exactly. w- walk in, just walk into the middle of something. Yeah. yeah. And it was it was fabulous. It looked <laughs> it was, really awesome. Yeah. I saw John Leguizamo was there, and yeah, I didn't see any celebrities, but it was really crowded. So I mean, I could have. Is been it all on Sixth Ave? It's like, it's in like a U shape. It's like Sixth Ave, and then goes up like Greenwich but it, like it's cool they show the map on like if you open Google Maps the, mm-hmm. the parade route is like a rainbow oh that's so cool <laughs> so, wow. so yeah uh, so it starts up like pretty far like Midtown I guess and then mm-hmm. it goes all the way down to Greenwich Village and then back up again um, and so so it was cool you could like walk two blocks and see two different parts of the parade <laughs> oh that's really cool nice. yeah so it was nice um, it definitely looks fun yeah Very I recommend it anxiety but yeah I always w- wanted to go it's if you um I think part of it is doing it enough times that you kind of get into your groove and know where you want to be. Mm-hmm. Um, we were able to find some good spots that like weren't too crowded, and you don't get as good of a vantage of the parade. But you know you're at mm-hmm. least not surrounded by people. But I totally agree with you. Crowds give me anxiety, mm-hmm. so uh, it's like going to Comic Con every year it makes me like makes me crazy. But it's worth it. It's like two days, and then I like <laughs> have to sleep for a week. <laughs> when we went to the Rockefeller Tree, I was like. Oh, I'll never do that. <laughs> Terrifies me. Yeah. I like the Halloween parade. Mm, never been. Uh, we went this year, 2017, <laughs> which happened to be the same day that the guy did that terrorist attack on the West Side Highway. Oh, right. But my boyfriend was like, you said we can go. I've never been. I'm like, there's a terrorist attack today, babe. <laughs> like, people sign. And, uh... He was like, fuck it, let's go anyway. I'm like, okay, if we're going to die, might as well be at the Halloween parade. <laughs> and we, like, went and got Chinese food. And then, like, because if you go to the village, they have, like, usually, like, I'll just go hang out in Washington Square Park because then you could just see all the people with their costumes, like, walk by. But they had the park closed because of the terrorist attack. <laughs> so we just, like, walked. And then he was like, well, where's the parade? And then he's like, I hear drums. I was like, oh, my God, we're going to die. So then we walked towards the parade. And it wasn't bad. We just, like, walked along 6th Ave. And there was cops everywhere. So I was like, oh, I mean, NYPD's here. We'll be good. I don't know. You just got to tell yourself that so you don't have a panic attack. <laughs> but the funds mm-hmm. of living here in New York City. I talked to Sane today. Oh, okay. In Chicago. Mm-hmm. Shout out to him. Yes. Him and Erica are cooking their baby right now in her belly. Nice. Oh. Congrats to them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You're like, whoa. <laughs> he said Can they went to Pride this weekend. And that people were like super pushy. And uh, he was like, oh, did you see the video about the girl? Some girl got slammed or something on the ground by the cop. But she like punched him or punched somebody. She punched somebody and then the cop like went to like restrain her and she like went crazy and the cops were on the ground. I don't know. Well, But he said like people were like trying his nerves there and like some lady got into like a f- fight. No, some guy like got into his face or whatever. And then he looked like he was about to go after Erica, his wife, and he was right. like, yo, I was about to lose my shit. Wow. I was like, oh my God. 
You know, we were talking about like what happened in the Bronx. He was like, "That's like Chicago every day." I was like, "I don't really think I need to go." <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I'm good. Wow. That's What's pretty... new with you, Martini? Uh, nothing much, man. Nothing much. Yeah, Thank you for. Oh, how was Heartbeats? Whatever the hell the movie was called. Oh, Heartbeats Loud. It was great. It was, yeah, it was pretty good. Um, Heartbeats, Heartbeats Loud. Like uh, yeah, it's an indie movie. Um, yeah, it was really good. I liked, I liked it a lot. Um, and RV, if you're listening, your comment was not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I was it's like, this guy, RV. man. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. I enjoyed it. Um, yep. So, um, so the meat and potatoes are why we're here. Yeah, the meat and potatoes started in uh, episode 106. And um, it was a heated discussion <laughs> about... Do you think Randy and Martini are sitting far enough apart? That was planned. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, and I had the suggestion of bringing everybody back to just, you know, discuss whatever needs to be discussed, whatever you guys, like, want to talk about. I'll answer it to the best of my ability and stuff like that. And I remember, I remember April was like, oh, I was like... Let, let, let's not gang up on Martini. <laughs> so I was like, like, no, I man. one peacemaker here. Like, let, let's go. You know, it's all right. But I want to start with um, Bridget just because she uh, listened to it the, the closest, like, you know, like, what, two hours ago or something like that? So um, first, before you, whatever, ask any questions, I just want you to, I just want you to tell everybody what you thought about that piece um, of the episode and I guess the um the episode overall too so because i because i saw that you got really hooked on the show because <laughs> because of that um well i was i was texting you i was like thoroughly entertained <laughs> by <laughs> by what went down that day um i have to say um i agreed with randy on like a lot of his points so <laughs> um so this is gonna be fun um and uh you know over overall that episode um gave me <laughs> um well I should clarify I agree with Randy when it came to you but then it got into the actual topic of the show and then I started to get a little um <clears throat> vocal <laughs> like yelling at the podcast while I was listening to it um people say that a lot yeah well it's <laughs> because I'd be sitting there and I'd just be like what no <laughs> like, um <clears throat> so now it was um Actually, what really annoyed me was that there was the sound clip that you added from a previous episode, and I don't know, I don't remember what episode it was because I didn't listen to that one. Um, but um, whoever it was, a guest of yours was talking about how um, like feminism has taken rights away from men, and we need to protect men's rights and that kind of thing. And I was like, "Whoa, slow down!" Was this No Bulls episode? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, imagine in person. Oh, yeah. we we'll have to I'm, hold you back. <laughs> I was, uh, I was listening to that, one, and then there was another episode I listened to where the he beginning rage in many people. Yeah, at the beginning of the episode, you were um, reading a lot of comments. Um, I don't know if it was that episode. I listened to a few episodes today, so I'm mixing them up. Um, but there was a bi- beginning of an episode where you were reading a bunch of listener comments from like Twitter and YouTube and that kind of stuff, and they all agreed with him. And I was like, no, no, what is happening? <laughs> I'm like, they're coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> I was, uh, um, so I think I need to give that episode a listen, maybe with a bottle of wine. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm I'm glad I listened to it because I, I you've been talking about doing this episode tonight, like in particular for a long time. So I'm glad that I finally got the full context of it and understand the backstory. Um, and I think uh, I think we're all gonna have some helpful things to say for you <laughs> improve your life <laughs> um uh, yeah okay cool so um i love google <laughs> <laughs> i just put in your email address and just pulled up some emails from 2013 it's amazing how that happens sometimes it's really bad but sometimes it's really good oh so you're about to go in she's looking for receipts Oh, I have them. <laughs> That's fine. I, I've had I've had them as well, so okay. it's okay. All right. <laughs> um, who would like to go first? Can you give like a quick, very very quick recap of 
the little part of the. Um, I remember listening to it. But it had to do with. Yeah. He, it was uh, some female you met, some woman you met online, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. she went ghost because you told her at the time you were living with your parents or something. Yes. Okay. So and that's that, right. That's that's what started the uh the conversation. Mm-hmm. Then it went to something about. And all then of, you said I left you because of money. Yeah. So he. He, he said the same thing about her, like your female just want money. And so, I mean, I mean, I'm no, no, nope. go ahead. I'm, I'm no, I'm just paraphrasing. So yeah, so he said about just female just want money, so on and so forth. They don't want about a good guy, and then all this other stuff. I, I think he has a negative um, outlook on relationships, so I think that's how we got we got into the back and forth. Okay, yeah, mm-hmm. gotcha. And then he did say that, uh, yeah, that we broke up because yeah, of because of money, because of money. And that's when I found out about Brooklyn, right? No, but yeah, it, yeah, it was Brooklyn, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Those somebody else, yeah. Okay. But yeah, so that's what started the whole thing. But mm-hmm. then he got kind of heated, so I kind of fell back because <laughs> I felt like it was going to get kind of physical. So I'm like, you know what? Let me be easy. But yeah, it got kind of, it got kind of heated. You got very defensive. <laughs> I was listening to it and I was like I knew what your face looked like <laughs> I, I went, that's the part I remember it. the most is the res- Martini's response yeah I, I kind of forgot the yo, beginning went, part seeing it and hearing it two different things because mm-hmm. a lot of that and he's yo he turned red and just getting upset <laughs> uh, he doesn't, I it, believe it yeah and, and it, it, I don't think well I don't think well, myself personally I don't think I was coming at him I was like yo you gotta listen to you probably gotta understand where she was coming from and I don't think he understood that that is incorrect because <laughs> even Bridget said, "Wow, they let you have it." <laughs> so, what? But I mean, did I? Did I? Was it like it wasn't anything malicious? I know. I, was, I think it was all very constructive. Yeah. Um, I just think you didn't want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, so I, I think yeah, they they let you have it, but in a way that was very much necessary. And so the first thing I when I was listening to that, and you were, and you were saying, um, you were saying. Oh, I told her I live with my parents. And I was like, well, first of all, why the fuck would you do that? <laughs> like, you're, 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 what, 38 now? Yeah, okay. So you're, you don't say, I live with my parents. You say, I help, I contribute to the family. My parents need help. I'm helping them. What if that yeah, his honest is very... mentality, like, I, I applaud it. But at the same time, like, I feel the, like... Phrasing is key. you got to market yourself, man. Right. But if that, that's the case, though, he has to be honest. He lives with his parents, right? Sure he does. But, you know, if that if that's what you said, like, what were, do you remember the words you used to explain that you lived with your parents? I live with my parents. I live with my parents. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, so that's the problem. <laughs> but then you have to ask somebody. Wait, hold on for a second. I'm, mm-hmm. But I'm not going to say that I'm a... Uh, custodial supervisor just to make it sound nice i'm a janitor you know what i'm saying like i'll say that like why do i need and first she's gonna find out anyway true if if i'm dating her so why beat around the bush because then she'll because then she'll turn it around like oh you were lying all this time like no i contribute to my parents like no you live with your parents motherfucker so like why he's cursing cursing. i'm not saying you should lie (laughs) (laughs) i'm not saying you should lie i'm saying like okay, why do you live with your parents? But if I remember correctly, she didn't ask you. She just didn't respond, right? Is that am yeah, I, she, am she, I remember? So she I'm saying never responded. Answer that question before it can be asked. Wait, say that again. Why do you live with your parents? Oh, because I don't have money to have a sustainable life by myself. Is that the real reason? Because I seem to remember in that episode, you were asked twice if you wanted to move in with your brother. Oh, that was the fucking clincher for me. And you said oh, no right. both times, and you could have lived there rent fucking free. So I ask again, why do you live with your parents? Because I don't have the sustainable <laughs> money to do that. That's not the real reason. That, <laughs> There's something that else. That sounds like your reason. But listen, if I was in a situation and April was like, yeah, listen, come live with me, babysit Kai, and you can live here, and, you know, don't worry about rent. And I didn't like living with my parents, and I could start to figure out a way and to... get laid all the time. Get on a plan for, like, I would never take advantage of her kindness, but if I could get myself on a plan to, like, get focused and get out, I'd be like, yo, you know what? 
living with my parents is like a crunch in my lifestyle that I would like to have. I'm going to do this. You guys don't seem to like get not. You may be different people. You keep saying I'm nothing like him. Whatever. That's fine. But you may be different people. But you're both men. You both care about the same people in your family. And it wouldn't have killed you to do it. And you'd still be available to go take care of your mom if you needed to. At, so, at the time, he lived completely out of state. No, when I, excuse me, when I offered him to move me the first time, I moved to um, Tampa. Oh, well, I mean, I offered, I offered so maybe there. he just didn't want to live in Tampa. Yeah, I mean, fine. Who but does? The, but yeah, the second time, right? <laughs> but the second time, I was moving to the D.C. Maryland area. Like he come in. Well, that was different information that we could have used. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I gave you that information on the. On the I, you didn't tell us that on the podcast. No, I think. I but did. I don't remember yeah. hearing that. But no, I'm no. pretty sure I did. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Where do you live now? Do you live in the Rockland County area? I live in New Windsor now. I don't know where that is. That's 30, 45 up, minutes. That's up past me. Oh. Um, yeah. Okay. So it's still not really conducive. Yeah, not but let's just say hypothetically. This is the thing. I even asked you hypothetically. And I understand I had already tarnished your opinion of myself. But I even <laughs> asked you hypothetically at one point. I remember it was April of the year after we met. And my and my roommate was moving out, and then the gay porn Wait, star what, was moving in. Wait, say it again. In. It was when? The April after the year we met. So, so what was that two thousand eight nine? It had to be two thousand nine then. Two thousand nine. So Aprilish of two thousand nine, my mm-hmm. roommate was moving out, mm-hmm. and yeah, it was because we moved like a couple months later, and right after my grandma passed. Yep, 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 yep. April of two thousand eight. No, I said it had to be nine. Nine, nine sorry, nine, nine. Which nine. is, okay. April of 2009, mm. I asked you, mm. if you and I were still together, would you have moved in with me? Because at that point, we technically would have been dating for a year. And yeah. my roommate was moving out, and I didn't really want the gay porn star to move in. Yeah. That was terrifying. That's a story for your ass. And you straight up, without even thinking about it, told me no. And literally, my roommate at the time was paying like $700 a month. Like, that's not an extremity amount of money. I don't know how much you're banking at your job, but that's... Not because I not a lot, because I remember I was working at Sears Portrait Studio. And I'm trying to figure out the timeline, because... I feel like you were still at uh, GameStop. No, no. I... Yes. I, I no, I, was, I thought I was at, when I was dating you, I was at this Sears Sports Studio. No, in 2009, you were definitely at GameStop because I was 19 and I was still sleeping with, you know, he who must not be named and you definitely were co-workers. Okay. okay. <laughs> so then I must have been a lead advisor. Okay. That's around the time I met you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cause, okay, that's weird because I'm trying to figure out. I don't think it was 2009 because... I started working with you in 2008. Because I'm trying, I'm you trying took to. took me to your house and this was there. Bro. Yeah, he moved in with me and Lewis. All right, but well, in 2008. <clears throat> yeah. The timeline, what happened? He moved in no, with no, no, yeah. I'm, no. I'm still trying he to figure it out because Lewis, I don't know why I would. But like, you know. I don't know why we. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why we would be having this conversation because we broke up uh, August 2008. Because I'm a masochist. That's probably why we were having it. And I was just As am like, I. It, right. So the Pisces in me was probably miserable with Brooklyn. And you I was were. Like, <laughs> and I had a, a fine time with you. Mm-hmm. And I felt very comfortable with you. And I asked you the question like hypothetically because I didn't, I wasn't super happy in the situation I was in, but I didn't really know how to get out of it mentally, I guess. And I asked you that question. It wasn't like I was single and I was asking you. I was being a horrible person and <laughs> just asking it to you. Right. No, yeah, I was and just trying were, to place it. That's why up I was me like, no, and I'm just like, well, this is some shit. Like, because at least like in my head, like, I guess I was looking for a reason, mm-hmm. like, which is not the healthy or the right thing to do. But I was what twenty something, eight, nine, eh, whatever. I was mm-hmm. too old for that shit. But <laughs> I was like looking for like justification that there was something else going on in the world that I should have been involved in. Other than right there dealing with psycho. What you were dealing with, yeah. Right. And when I asked you that, you were like, no. And I was just like, well, then I made the right decision because this is the situation I'm comfortable with. (laughs) 
in my head at the time, I felt that I did mm-hmm. because that's the situation I've dealt with. I'm not good at dating. I don't know how to do it. Mm-hmm. I I don't know why. I'm just kind of, and it's not healthy all the time, but I'm just kind of built for long-term monogamous, right. like let's play house and get married type relationships. Mm-hmm. And yes, a lot of them have ended in bullshit and whatever, but that's just, what I'm built for. I don't know anything else. Mm-hmm. I'm not good at that going out and dating shit. Mm-hmm. I just don't know how to do it. Right. I, I think I I think I believe I said no just because I knew just the money that I was making. So I didn't want to give you a false hope and be like, yeah, I'm right. sure we could. And right. again, why would I say that? Because I was definitely dating my ex-fiance at that time. So. Yo, so have you, have you, yes. um, have you tried online dating since that situation? Since when? Since the yeah, oh, no, since last, the the no. When I went ghost on you, no. You stopped. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I haven't been on. Haven't been on anything. Why is that? Because I because I get into these cycles where it happened recently. Actually, I I talked about it on the podcast that like I'll go on a um. I'll go on a dating website and then I'll be like, yo, man, I really miss like love and all that stuff. I really want to freaking like be there for somebody, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, yo, man, let's freaking do it. So I go on, put the picture, put the profile stuff. And then boom, you know, I see a lot of chicks like, oh, you know, um, I want somebody with my shit together, blah, blah, blah. I mean, with their shit together and all that stuff. And, you know, putting down the list, laundry list of the things that they want in a man. And, and that's that's on them. They could whatever. They could have whatever that they want. Um, and I'm just like, yo, what the hell am I doing? And, and, and also I'll be like looking at my freaking bank account and I'm like, Ooh, yeah, well, I, I, I can't facilitate a relationship right now. I, I just can't do it. So I don't. Makes sense. Yeah. I don't, I don't see, I don't think it makes sense to date when you, uh, can't afford to date. Yeah. But, um, so like it's, it sucks cause I'm like, st- you know, as of right now I am, you know, stuck in this limbo cause like it sucks cause like I do want to like go out and date and, and, and again, you know, just like yourself, I, I I don't know how to date. I want to be in a long-term relationship and stuff like that. And even, or, you know, some people are just like, nah, man, yo, just date and fuck, man. What the fuck you doing? You in the perfect position. <laughs> you know? Yeah. This guy's nodding his head. <laughs> <laughs> are you, what happened? Oh, well, no. I mean, as being as a single person, I can... Why uh, limit myself? That's, that's the thing. Okay. Don't be mad. <laughs> but are you in the position to just go out and sleep with people if you have to lie to your mom about why you're not coming home? Because that definitely came up in the last podcast. We need cow horns. Yeah. I what are they called? <laughs> that was the. <yeah. laughs> <laughs> when in the middle of like a, a, a reggae song. Yeah. <laughs> oh, air horns. Yeah. <laughs> cow, cow horns. horns. I, I never heard of a cow horn before. Like, what's cow horns? I combine cowbells and air horns. <laughs> cow horn um so, no but but like to, answer the question that's what i'm doing <laughs> to, to date and fuck i don't need to tell my mom anything if, but if it, for a long-term relationship yeah why do i need to tell my mom hey i'm going out to date and fuck you know if it's yeah, if but, it's a relationship you know, I, then I, that's I, different I, I think what came up in the conversation we, had, we last had was um Something to do with the car or something like that? Yeah. Right. Oh, that's I just I, listened to this. Right. That's what I was telling yeah. you. That, you you got like, in a fight oh, with you, your mom and you, about the car. And that's how I found out about Brooklyn because you went to right. Brooklyn after. Yeah. So that's how yeah. that came up. Okay, yeah. I went yeah. so, immediately after. I'm like, <laughs> savage. Jennifer <laughs> lost out in that situation because you didn't take the car to spite your mom for finally saying that you could take the car, which is bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Because in the end, you just kind of end up fucking yourself doing that. Yeah. Even but, 2016... When you slept here for New Year's Eve, like, it was, like, a process that you had to, like, kind of, I don't know if you lied to your mom, but you kind of had to, like, and, and this is not a disrespect to you. Like, I don't come from your culture. I moved out when I was 23 quickly and fast, and I was scared, but, you know, Mr. Harris said it was all going to be okay. <laughs> and, uh... Whatever, got me out of the house because I probably would have never left. I didn't even want to leave my mom's side to go to Disney World, like with my grandma. I cried the whole time. So the fact that I moved out at 23 is a goddamn miracle. But, like, you, I um, was dealing with you at 28 and then again at 36. 36 and we're having the same conversations. And mm-hmm. it's like, damn. And that's the thing. Like, that's 
my beef with you, if I have to have a beef, is that one, I think that you internalize all these things that have happened to you, and not that they're not terrible things that have happened in your relationships. They are, and they're heartbreaking, and they fuck with your head. But, like, you don't ever gain strength from it. You only gain anger and resentment and, like, you want revenge at times. And you have to turn that into something else because that's making you a shitty person, and you're not a shitty person. I do believe you have a negative like, outlook on you, relationships. You don't know how to, like take those experiences and be like, yeah, this happened to me, but I'm not going to let it happen again. And now I know how to deal with things. Like you don't, you lack confidence in yourself sometimes. Yes. And, but you see why though? Cause these things keep happening. But it doesn't matter. No, but do you know nothing, how many times I've been fucked you, over? Though. We talked about it on this podcast for the last three years. Even when I was dating in between crazy and my boyfriend and before that and when the other one moved out look at how many little shitheads I dealt with who want to come over here and just fuck or do whatever or, you know whatever the case may be you take it as like a learning experience and you're like fuck I ain't gonna fuck with that again or I'm not gonna do that again or you know I gave up my heart or whatever to this person and now you know they're gone like okay it sucks and like you just try to build off of that but you can't let it like define you cause that's not who you are you know, and, like, I'm not going to sit here and, like, run you through the mills. I know you're a good person. I know you have a lot of potential to be a great husband and a great boyfriend and all those things. But you don't see those things in yourself. And if you don't see those things in yourself or you don't even know how to fucking fake it till you make it, you're not going to find someone to love you because you don't love yourself. And I know that's stupid and cliche, but you don't even, like, try to. Like, you're just legit mad at the world because of what happened. Starting with me, maybe starting from the bitch in, like, kindergarten. I don't know, but let you have to let it go because you're not going to progress. And my other beef with you is that I met you in 2007. Eight. Eight. You're exactly where you were when I left you. With the Like, when I met you again in 2015... You had told me you had gone to school and you had done some things. And I thought maybe you had just kind of like been in between something. But you're still there. And like I know you have things going on. But like you don't ever go above and beyond to, to get in a different spot. Like I have a heart condition. I have a bunch of other shit that I can be sitting here saying, whoa me, my life sucks. I don't want to do anything. But you. You don't have, like, that hustle mentality, which is what uh, Randy was talking about last time. You have heart, but your heart is, like, so damaged from things that it shouldn't even be damaged from anymore that you don't put that into anything else and, like, whatever. You just let all these things defeat you and weigh you down, and you just don't progress. If you progress, then you'd be a really good look for somebody, and you don't want to lie and say, I'm helping my mom or whatever the case may be, but... You know, and then you get mad every day that, like, people have boyfriends and you don't have a relationship or girlfriend. <laughs> then you, That makes you more mad and you, like, hoax smash everything. I mean, you're not physically hoax smashing everything. Emotionally, you are. You have to grow from that. And I don't know how you do it. That's that's something you have to get right with. Randy, I'm done. No, I kind of agree with most of your statements. But no, but I think you do have, have a negative outlook when it comes to relationships. And I think when you do that, it just manifests itself because you never find... Like and I think it comes out like that, and I think these women that you approach, they may, they may know this, they may feel it. You know what I'm saying you really can't have, like, even though you know I've been shitted on. You know what I'm saying I've been through the ringer and back, but I always go out like the mirror. I look in, I'm six two, twenty ten pounds. I'm the fly dude in, in the room, any any room I step in. So, but you gotta have that confident mentality. You just gotta be you at all times and being you. I mean, whatever that you is. You know what I'm saying I remember the time. <clears throat> excuse me. He's like, well, look at you, man. You got swags on the side. Right, swag. It's just me. I shower. I groom myself, and I go out because was like I just. It, just, it is what it is So I, I do come across confident I, I am confident You know what I'm saying But I, I do have my own personal issues Like I have trust issues Like a Like no, like no other But you can't You can't knock The next female The next woman For the last woman did And so and, you know, I, I'm not going like I don't do it Because I've done it But I always, I always But I reel it in So you gotta You gotta take that into account <laughs> And then as far You know the whole Black woman thing we have <laughs> You can roll your eyes All you want But you have this thing Where you, you alienate black women Because you think you don't want money. They want the drug dealer. They want so on and so forth. Dude, I'm not a drug dealer. I don't have. I'm not this. I don't look like a drug dealer. I'm just. I'm an average, typical nine to five working hard, working black man, and I've dated nothing but black women. 
and none of them wanted my money and anything else a drug dealer so on and so forth they just you gotta find you gotta pick and choose i mean you gotta you gotta find what's what's good for you so i don't know i don't know where you find these women that want just money but there's there's a there's millions of them that, that aren't like that so you can't alienate a whole pool of um, women because you because of what you've dealt with because of one one or two different females but they also don't approach me as well, so they don't approach me neither. No, they don't approach me. I mean, you approach them. <laughs> nah, nah. But like, but like, the black chicks—they're not—they're not feeling me. So how it's do you like, know this? Right. That's what I'm saying. How do you know this? Well, most, was, most women don't approach me. Yeah, they don't approach me. Most, I mean, put yourself most like women you gotta don't go, go out, be like, be, be in or around them. Like you just gotta be around it and find find something, do some talk, make them laugh, do whatever it is, mm. whatever you're good at, make uh, make them laugh. Once you get them to laugh, you're good, bro. And you're a funny well, dude. You can do that. Most women don't approach men, though. Yeah. 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 I, yo, no I, matter how much they like him, no matter how good they think he looks, a lot of times yo, women uh, will try to get a man's attention before they approach him. Yeah, if I dated 100 women, I'd say probably two approach me. And it wasn't like, oh my God, you didn't get him, what's your name? It was just, it was just, <laughs> it was just, it was simple conversation, some small talk, and it went from there. But no one's ever approached me like, let me like, this never happened. Well, actually, you know what it happened this weekend? But that was, <laughs> <laughs> like that was the second time <laughs> it did happen this weekend. <laughs> two out of a hundred but I think she was drunk but yeah but, but yeah but no but for real like out of out of a hundred women like I said I met a hundred women I probably yo, honestly like probably two probably approach and the ones I've, I've, I do met or I mean I have met it's your starters with just simple conversation simple talk you know what I'm saying small yeah. talk and then it goes from there I've and never, that, and nothing, never approached her yeah. nothing always happens sometimes you just meet them talk one time laugh joke and walk away well, I, I only date online, so it's like um, it's like a microcosm for dating is like online. Um, and I would say mostly just I will message a guy first only if I really, really, really like his profile. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, I just kind of let them come to me and it's not like a it's not like a gender role kind of thing. It's just like who I am as a person. I just. I don't know. I guess it's because my last relationship, I had to do all the fucking work that, you know, I've like, you know, it's, it's it's my turn to kick back and chill. Um, but it's, um, like Randy was saying, um, you can't, you can't alienate a whole group of people. And you know, I'm guilty of the same thing because I've been dealing with a lot of asshole men recently where, um, we're like, so like if you've listened to the show before, I'm, I'm bisexual. So, um, problem is it's like the dating pool is just like saturated with men so it's like I get one woman in every like 20 guys and um and women don't talk to me because I'm bisexual not a lesbian that's like a whole other (laughs) it's like a whole other thing um but I can understand that yeah I'm like it's like my it's it's ridiculous Um, yeah they they discriminate just as much as they're discriminated against it's like it's (laughs) uh, it's so annoying um but (laughs) The, um, the, the thing is, it's like, I've been dealing with just so many jackass men who just keep like dropping the ball or just saying stupid shit or like even my own friends who will like, like, I, I got like dick pics from a friend a few years ago. <laughs> like, it's just, it's just like shit like that, that made me, you know, like, fuck it, I'm done with men. I'm only dating women now. Like, like, and I had a phase where there was like a good six months that I, switched all my dating profile stuff I wasn't even looking at men and um but that's the thing is it's like you've gotta I've realized I have to like wade through all of the shitty options to find the good one and it's a lot of work and it's exhausting so like I get why that can be frustrating but it's like it's not okay to say like it's not okay for you to say like all women just want men to pay for everything and, um, you know, I can't date women because I'm not making enough money to support the shit that they want. Just like, it's not okay for me to say all men are assholes and all men send unsolicited dick pics <laughs> like, because they don't. A lot of them do. <laughs> it's very stressful, but it's, um, it, it's, it's like the same kind of thing. Like we both got to be better about that. So, you know, it's like, it's not just you, but, um, yeah, you gotta, I think you gotta open your mind and stop, um, attacking like women as a whole it's you know it's like you know it's it's hard because we don't actually use names on this show but um you know it's like 
um, religious girl, right? Is that what you call her? <laughs> yeah. She fucked up, but that doesn't mean that, like, religious all... Religious girl is, um... Yeah, I know you're talking about. <laughs> um, religious... That's your fiancé, right? No. no. Religious girl? Oh, get out of here. Oh, okay. What's weird is, like... there was another one? It's a weird... <laughs> it was a weird choice to call her religious girl because she's not religious. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, so it's, like, an ironic name. She didn't like Martini because he was too religious. She said you're too religious? Well, just because he believed in God. Yeah, she oh, was an atheist. She, oh, I was about to say she's yeah. an atheist. Okay. Um, and, like, I am too. So, like, I like I, I can I can see where she was coming from. But, um... I don't like he was going to invite her to church. He doesn't even go to church. I think, well, when, when you were telling me about that, it was... Like, I remember... You were talking to me about it, like, while you were in the situation. And I remember she, um... Or, like, I was saying, I was like, oh, if I was in a situation like that and I really liked a guy who was religious you know, we'd have to make some compromises and, like, as long as, like, I didn't have to get married in a church and, like, I didn't, ha- like, you know, if, if, like, my husband wanted to take our kids to church, like, that's fine as long as I don't have to go, like, that kind of thing. And then you were saying, like, she's just not about that. Like, she, like, you know, she won't do that at all. And I was like, all right, well, if that's about, important yeah. to her, then, then it you, worked anyway. Yeah, then you bought, dodged a bullet. Right. But the problem is, it's like, if after that you're like, oh, well, all atheist women suck <laughs> and I will never date them, <laughs> then, like... Then that's the problem. Um, so I think it's you've been burned, and that sucks. But you gotta you gotta open up your mind to other possibilities, um, and you know stop lumping us all in together because we don't all suck. And you're e Romeo, <laughs> man. You're good at this online dating thing. So you're e Romeo. You're good at online dating. E Romeo. When was this? <laughs> I mean, you've had most of the relationships started where online, correct? Okay. So I'm saying, so you're good at this online And, and, and look what happened. <laughs> Yo, people, people break up, bro. They, they don't all work out. People break up. Yeah, people break up, but look what happened to me. <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's, is it because you were engaged and then you're not? Is that like is that the killer for you? No, but he's saying that like I'm a Romeo and like Yo, you met. Look, look, look what happened to us, you know, that thing. But you met her online, correct? Yeah. All right. Right. Fine, but- okay, and then look how... Look at that freaking you know, explosion. It wasn't know, like a, okay, you know, but, I don't like you, blah, blah. It, yo, but she, it she, went down you know, crazy. Think, but the, but I'm saying they, they do like you. They it do wasn't like you, but then whatever crazy, happens like, afterwards is something completely different. I don't know. I don't. You know I see, the pattern I've noticed in like your relationship's not ending, your relationship's ending is that it's not that they don't like you. Like, it's not like you fucked up or you cheated or you're a bad guy. It's just there was like, there was a piece they were looking for that wasn't there. So it's it's just like, you know, with, um, you know, with with Jennifer, you know, it was. <laughs> you can say her name. <laughs> <laughs> I the only one I can with say. That bitch. I mean, I don't I don't really know exactly why things ended. I know it's because you were interested in someone else was part of it. It was it was kind of like a culmination of things. It was really just like. At first, like, I thought Martini was, like, the, like, Wonder Bread. It was great. Like, everything was, <laughs> seriously, like, for a first date, top notch. Like, he got, was so sweet. Uh, we went to, we met at Paramus Park Mall, right? And we walked around, and did we have lunch? I don't think so, right? I don't remember. I don't know. We walked yeah, sounds around, like a great we went date. to GameStop, <laughs> and... <That was> <laughs> And uh, we were talking about, I had just gotten a Wii, so we were talking about that. And then I was, like, telling him that, like, I didn't know, like, what games to get for the Wii, um, blah, 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 blah. And then when I got home, I went and turned on my Wii, mm. and I had a game gift, and he gifted me. It was me. a notification. Yeah, thanks. No, and I he, mean, to explain it. <laughs> and he gifted me um, Super Mario Brothers for my Wii. Cause that I, is so cute. And, and he's like, I had. Hey, a, that's not something I would. He do. said I had I, a great. I'm like completely different. That's not. Yeah. <laughs> he said I had a great time. Like I hope you but, enjoy this. But but like you said, it do, do do exactly. me do, do who I am. Exactly, and it and it worked though. You know what I'm saying? So you're e Romeo. You right. got you took on a good date, whatever it was. Right. Oh well, yeah, then, the point wait, I'm making is. The first is, time you came to my house was that the first. No, the first time you came to my house was for the rock band party. Yeah. We were, Wait, that's a that's a video game. See. Yeah, but he walked in and there was like a bunch of like. Fine dudes. Exactly. <laughs> it was a freaking. What jungle. does that have to do with anything? Yeah, what well, they were doing there. They were just all friends. They were, I wasn't like hooking up with any of them. But I didn't know that. <laughs> I wouldn't invite you over. I mean, I might have, but. Yeah, I, thank you. Thank you. Okay. I wouldn't have invited all right, you so over to like a room full of. They're just all my friends, and some of them were with their girl- girlfriends, and well, some of them were like in nerds. They all packed in their rock band and a Mini Cooper and drove to Jersey. This relationship 
it sounds like did not end solely because of you. <laughs> it sounds like you guys maybe both made some bad decisions. Um, no, no, no. It didn't end solely because of it was basically just a lot of the things like with his like not being able to be present a lot or having to like lie. And I was like living a lifestyle at that time where I kind of came and came as I wanted and like did what I wanted. The one time I went to his house because I didn't think it was fair for him to always come to my house. His mom made me super uncomfortable, but she was nice. It's just, you know, I kind of felt like I was like, I regressed or something. Like I was having a high school relationship and I was just like, oh, like at first, like for a second, I was like, oh, it's cute. But then I was just like, "Mm, this isn't going to work. Like I'm in my 20s. I'm a little out of control right now. And now I have like (laughs) some mom knocking at the door and it's like 958 and she wants me to go home. So I'm just like, eh. Yeah, it's mad awkward. Yeah, it's a little awkward. But that's. Right, but that's the thing is it's not, yeah, yeah. and it's not like... And we maybe would have gotten past all that, but I really was, like, fucked up in the head over my ex, and Mm -hmm. it was, I don't know. Yeah, so it's not like, so it's not like Martini is a bad guy. No, no, it's not like you were like, oh, fuck this guy, I I gotta move on. No. Yeah, so, and it's, I don't think it's been like that in any of your relationships. I think it's always, it's always been like, oh, he's great, but... It's the other stuff. It's the, I guess, his lack of finances or probably lack of hustle or whatever else it is and that i mean so in the beginning stage lack of finances him, no, no i i disagree so, i think no, it's i we, think it's the latter he literally just said no he said could have been right it's i don't think it's finances i think it's it's as you as you said it the lack of hustle i think that's so but and the thing which is, i'm too I white like, to um, say but i like, <laughs> but at, at 38 39 years old um i, I said it in the first in the, the first, when we got into that first discussion that um you can't at thirty nine. No, no. If you're dating a fee, a woman who's what thirty five, between thirty five and forty, yeah. At that point, she can't. She she's not dating for potential at the time. She wants to date most of the time someone someone who's established or absolutely close to being established. Absolutely. So if you run down your credentials or your 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 current resume, then like, uh, I mean, he's he's a good guy, but if she's ass out, would you be able to? If you got a long term relationship, like if, if she if she falls on hard times because she loses her job, but would you be able to hold it down? And vice versa, you know what I'm saying? No, no, like, yeah, I, I totally understand. So, so at this point now, that's why. I start, so that's why I, I agree with you. Well, I mean, hundred percent that you that you you, you kind of put a pause on dating now because you don't feel like you're financially able to um, to date, which I agree with. I mean, I fell into that trap but, too. But some girl friends of mine keep. Saying no, we don't all care about nah, money, blah nah, blah, nah, and I'm like, I'm not no, listening to yeah, you that, because just, because of that reason, like, I'm like, I'm not, not doing so, it. Yeah, because like you, and especially when you're dating, like the the first cup. I mean, when you're in the courting process, all that. I mean, that's your financial burden to bear. You can't ask them like, yo, let's go Dutch. Exactly. Yeah, but there's 101 free things to do. Yeah, that and there's nothing I, free in New York. It, it's free. What? I mean, there's free events, but there's, there's not a whole free day. I mean, I'm, you can't take every date to GameStop. And walk around Premise Park more. You can't do that Did with everything. Did you ever day. see? Yeah, I should stop going back to like 15 years ago too. What's that, that you was talking a about? Long time ago, right? What was that? 2007, 2008. Well, what are we talking the about? Problem, the, the problem. The problem with that. Thing, that's what I'm saying. Oh no! Uh, but, uh, no, uh, no, no! I'm saying the like, problem with that is that Martini is physically still there, emotionally with everything that happened, and like just in life. So it's not. We rehash it because. You haven't let go of it yet, and you really have to. Like, you came back in 2015 for whatever reason and came emailed me. Uh, Reconcile. Oh. Reconcile. Okay. And then agreed to start a podcast with me, but you clearly have, like, animosity. I can't talk about your, your ex fiance because I don't know her. I don't know. I do. <laughs> No, but I know, I know that. Situation. I watched Doctor Who, Doctor Who with her. <laughs> it was awesome. Now, I know that situation messed him up. But then, on a flip, like, because I think when he proposed, you were you had you had just lost your job. You had lost your job already, right? So when she said yes, so then right. and, and part of her reason for uh, for breaking off the engagement was because you weren't working or something like that. That That's should make no sense to that, me. At that point, as soon as somebody said yes to me, I would have been at like Home Depot or anywhere just trying to find anything to make it happen in the meantime. Like and that's the part that I don't get from you. But and she knew he was unemployed when when she when right. he also he was, you he was know unemployed. that if you want to start a family and you guys are talking about wedding venues and talking about this and that, like that's gonna cost money and like a job or or like this a lottery winning is not gonna just come to you. Like that's the part I don't get. Like even now you'll be like, oh I don't know if I could do this or I don't know if I could do that. But like 
You know, people go out and do anything to make money. I mean, I'm not suggesting sell drugs, but like. Go ahead and dance. What? You make money moves? What? Like but if, if your friends tell you, if your female friends tell you all girls don't want money, and then you say, like, I'm not listening to that, and you meet, like, happen to meet a girl that you like, and she says that, are you going to kind of, like, and she says, I'm not really concerned with a guy, money, are you not going to believe her? <clears throat> not not at first. Because it's like. Because I, I, know it, I know it will come to a head. Because you have to, it's a definite, everybody has their own definition of having money. Mm -hmm. Like some people call having money, like I have a coworker and she says, oh, my ex-husband has money. But what she describes to me as him having money, I don't consider that him having money. Mm -hmm. I think he has a decent paycheck, Mm -hmm. but to me, that's not having money. Mm -hmm. He gets up and work every day like everybody else. And if he doesn't work, he won't have money. So sometimes you have to have a definition for things. Right. If does somebody mean have money as in a, a biweekly paycheck? I think at that. Does have somebody money mean too. have money mean fifty thousand dollar emergency fund in the bank? Like no, but you have money. You have to have money to afford a meal or a couple or two or three. Right, for but four I, dates. that's your definition of having money. No, when, I mean, when he meets a woman and she says, "I want to," like when you say, "Women want a man that has money." That could mean a lot of things. No, but the re- but the reason why he's not dating right now is because he's financially strapped. Correct. Yeah, and I don't have my shit together. Yeah, so and part of being, and I think part of dating and the whole courting process. I mean, yo, like you would, you would just think. I mean, per, this is me. That yo, the the first. I mean, during the courting process, it's on me. It's my as financially, it's my thing. I got like I'm. We're going out. I'm planning dates. I'm paying for this, that, and the third. I don't expect you to come out your pocket. And it's, and it's not me trying to show off that I may or may not have any money. It just I think, and I mean, it may be old way of thinking, but it is. It's just it is what it is. But I, but I think, and please, I mean, mm-hmm. there's three women here, so um, correct me if I'm wrong. But isn't that because Are you um, gonna listen to our correction? <laughs> no, the, no, the correction is okay. like is like, um, don't you want to see if the guy can? facilitate when times you know like when you say like when times are tough or whatever like let's see what this guy can do not to say like he's balling out but it's like okay this guy has money enough so if but something paying, does happen to me or whatever okay this guy you paying know. for dates doesn't signify that no there's, paying there's also, for dates doesn't mean he pay his bills true, true, true. if he yeah. paying for dates doesn't mean he has uh, his savings account doesn't say zero it doesn't mean he has money in the bank it means he could have got paid yesterday yeah. Like yesterday was payday, so he paying for this date. But next week he could be broke. You know what I mean? Like that's what I'm saying. What is having money? There's people that make a hundred thousand dollars a year and don't have any money. Like they don't have anything right. in the bank. I think they it's... make it and they spend it. So he still can't take care of you. You know what I mean? Like you can make fifty thousand dollars a year and still can't afford much. Like, still can't, like, you can't, if there's men that make $50,000 a year and they can't have a woman, so, oh, let's get married and you don't have to work anymore. Most people can't afford that. Like, they can't afford to take care, like, my boyfriend lost a job, I can't afford to take care of him. I can't pay his bills. And he can't pay mine. Right. I'm, you know what I mean? Yeah. We and may not also... be homeless, but he can't pay my bills. Um, I also, I think, I mean, it's probably a little bit of a, <clears throat> like, a generational thing. Um, because I don't agree that the first few dates are a man's responsibility to, um, I don't agree to show off. I mean, it's, I, I don't call it show. No, I just, it's not showing off. Well, I mean, I've said it wrong. Go over the top and pressing. Right. I mean, it's like, how was it, but paying for a meal diet going over the top? Well, no, no, but I mean, when she's saying three, four, five dates, like she's saying the second date, she might be like, I got it. Well, that's fine. You can offer. I'm good with that. When I dated poetry guy, like with the first time around, um, when, um, he had a job that wasn't paying well and he wasn't happy with it. And I was doing really well. Like I had a job in my field. I was like, I was making like 40 grand a year. Like I was doing well. And, um, and I paid for our first few dates and he, I mean, he protested a lot. And, um, eventually I was like, look, dude, just, just let me pay because I'm like, I'm, I don't, I don't right. care. I don't think any less of you because of it. I'm like, right. you know, and like, you know, it's someday you're going to repay the favor. You're going to get your dream job. And like, you know, we'll, we'll swap it's back and forth. It's like, out. it's fine. Um, but I think it's, um, no, oh, I was going to say something else. But you <laughs> said she can offer, but you're not going to accept it. No. I mean, you said she can offer. You know, like, it depends. Like first, first date. No, I'm not going to accept it. Thank mm-hmm. you. Thanks for the offer. Second date. Probably not. Third. 
Maybe. I don't know. It depends. And that's why men are well, broke. <laughs> you said who? That's why. That's no, why but men. no. But, those, but those, I mean, if that's important those, to but, you, then that's, that's No, but those fine. are perils of being a man and perils of dating. Like, not necessarily. And, right. and that's but why I'm not well, a serial we'll dater. remember that you're a lot older than these two. No, I'm four years older than I'm not a lot older. Oh, well, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lot younger, <laughs> younger than yeah, me, all of you. So. Gabriel's younger than me, yeah. and I'm a lot. the baby. that's not the perils of being a man. That's the perils of being sexist. Because exactly. I understand, you know, in your mind, you're being a gentleman. Bridget and April are going to be best friends. I don't even know <laughs> Oh, when I was listening to episode 106 today, I was like, I'm naming my first daughter April. Oh, <laughs> don't do that to her. She has to hear, hey, April, where's May her whole life? <laughs> <laughs> when, yeah, when, when, when Bridget came in, she, she was like, I, is April here? Is she coming? I was like, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but in your mind, you're being a gentleman. So it's, no, that's not bad. Because men should be gentlemen, and okay. women should allow them to be gentlemen. Right. But you have to, in your mind, feel like, okay, well, like, it's nothing wrong. She has a job. She works. No, I understand that. We're on our third or fourth date. I was say, third or fourth okay. date, she can offer, all right, fine, you want to pay? Go ahead. I'm but you said you may not let her. I mean, like I yeah. said, it all depends. But like, I, but I just, I understand, to me, there is a courting process. Right. And I can, I can, if you, if it's a priority to you, to pay for the first few dates and that's something that's important to you, then that's fine. I respect that. That's great. But I don't think it's fair to expect the same thing from Martini. Because oh, that I don't, I don't that may not be well, no, his he, priority. No, yeah, exactly. I'm not saying that. But but he he decided not to date because he's funny after he's strapped. And I said I agree with him. So and, yeah. and and I think the whole like mentality with that and and, and, and I kind of agree with that too is because I think the reason why you won't allow uh, a woman to pay, or at least as much as you, because it'll never be 50-50. If anything, it'll probably be, like, what, 70-30 that you'll be paying? So you don't want to... As far as what you mean? Paying. Paying for shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh-huh. I, I think in your head, it was, it's always going to be 70-30, so you might as well just keep with that mentality as opposed to like waiting for her to see if she's going to pay, and then she doesn't. You're like, see, I should have just paid. Yeah, you know. I mean, that's what and end saying, up being I never, alone because I never, I never, that's I never, insane. I never like, thought about it that deep, but it's just like I don't. It just <laughs> no, not just you. I'm just like I don't know. It just like I said, it may be a generation, a generational thing, but it just that's that's how I've been and that's how I've dated. You know what I'm saying so, and it works sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. When I say it does, I mean I, and then every every woman I've dated has been the same route. It's not like I changed up for anybody else, and it's not me trying to show my pockets because I've dated plenty of times when I was making twenty six, thirty thousand dollars an hour. You know what I'm saying and. So I mean, it is, it is what it is. It's not. It's just not any. It's not. I'm not trying to um throw my money on the table just cause. You know what I'm saying because that's not the case. Like you know, as far as um a woman's concerned, and it's funny because now I'm about to contradict myself because <laughs> I honestly don't care what a what, you know. what my part <laughs> like. <laughs> I don't care what my partner made because my my only concern is that yo can you you can you sustain the lifestyle that you want? You know what I'm saying? You can make you can make thirty seven thousand dollars a year. <laughs> But yo, if you have your two thousand dollars in debt, you're good. You know what I'm saying you can control that life. You know what I'm saying so you don't. You're not. Are you, so I, now it's a point where you don't. You you want me. You don't like. Yeah, you don't need yeah. me type thing. So yeah. So I kind of contradict myself. So I don't really yeah. care what they make. So, but because I mean, part you know, of her sustaining her lifestyle could be going out to eat a lot. And if you say I want to cook four nights out of the week, and she say I want to eat out, shouldn't she pay? Yes, that's part of her lifestyle. That's what I do. I don't yeah. like cooking that's sometimes. Part, that's part of. I'm if feeling lazy like, tonight. Let's if, go out. It's on me. You, you yeah, think like I bought groceries. What? I cook most of the time. Maybe once or twice a month I go out, what? and she's like, "Oh, I eat out all the time." Shouldn't she pay if she wants? Yeah, well, but now we're now in a relationship. I even mean, not, if, not, not even no, if you're dating, because no, that's still her lifestyle. Even if you're just well, dating, part of her lifestyle is going to restaurants a lot. So if she says, "Oh, I want to go to this restaurant," and you mm-hmm. just took out the day See, before, this isn't about you anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? but it kind of is because it's like when you see all this list of things it's like and you say uh, like when you say i don't have well i can't date because i don't have money and i don't have it together what if you meet somebody else that doesn't have it together yeah too, like what if she doesn't have it, like train wreck <laughs> like a woman that doesn't when a woman says a guy that has a job and all these things it doesn't mean she wants your money that's what you have to understand you don't mean, want a woman She might like want that. you. A, a man wants a, a a woman wants a man that has a job. It doesn't mean she wants your money though. Like maybe she just don't want to have to pay for everything. Yeah. Or she doesn't want to have to pick you up all the time. Or she doesn't want to 
you know, but it doesn't mean I, I need you to take care of me. I need your money. I need you to give me money all the time. I need you to pay for everything. Right. So, like, and when you see this laundry list of things on profiles, you have you have to take that with a grain Yo, of salt. Having profiles is bullshit anyway. They just put up right. a front. Right. You have to take that with a grain and of it, salt because yeah. a lot of times the person that's listing all these things don't have all these yeah, things. Yeah, and her ex probably just came home from jail or some right. shit. Right. A man <laughs> with a six pack, she probably yeah. doesn't have a six pack. Just like men that like women with nice feet have disgusting feet. You know what I mean? Like you have to like take these things with a <laughs> grain of salt. You know what I mean? Like a lot of times, and skip over those profiles. Right. And I feel because like- it's unrealistic. I gotta, I gotta add. Sorry, just hold on to it. No, I, I do skip those files, but mm-hmm. I, profiles, what? for those profiles. But I mean, you keep seeing them. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. I can't, I can't uh, because not it, listen. I mean, not to say that. Oh well, this is it. I have to speak to her. Mm-hmm. But if if that's what she's looking for, that's what she's looking for. I can't be like, nah, you're not looking for that. Look for me. No, but you can skip it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and on, I do, yeah. Right, because online. But a lot is, of people put those things and all the rules are different but a lot of people like yeah but the main things that i see is like you know you gotta have your shit together with whatever which i don't oppose to of course you know but But then to everything everybody got their own definition together Mm -hmm. because you could you know what i mean like some but i don't think it's necessarily like when they say you have you need to get your shit together it's like he he needs to be nice and warm i don't think they're talking about personality wise i think there's like but that could just assets mean, or whatever. it depends on what that woman has been through everybody has their own life experiences so shit together could mean she doesn't want an addict you know right. what i mean like shit together could mean she doesn't want somebody with anger problems it depends right. on what you know what i mean like i want a guy to have his stuff together could mean like she want a guy maybe that's in touch with his emotions as opposed to angry all the time blaming her for all his problems it could be em- an emotional thing you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it could mean that. Like, it doesn't necessarily... Like, a lot of times it does mean I want a guy with a job and an apartment and a car. But sometimes you have to go a little deeper. Because it might be some things... Like, when you said to the girl, I live with my parents, I don't feel like she should have not said anything after that. Just because somebody lived with their parents doesn't mean they're not helping in some way. It doesn't mean a parent has health issues. Like, you don't know the person's situation. That's why I was saying. Be more specific. But, like, or, or you know, like, somebody could say, oh, like... You live with your parents in a two family. You live, in, you stay in the basement. You, I mean, if she want to know more, she should ask you more. If you if you didn't think to say more, she could have asked. Like sometimes it's just about finding somebody that's at your same speed. I know plenty of people. I know people your age that don't have their shit together necessarily. This I know plenty of people still live with their parents, not at the job they want to be at, not making the salary they want to make, not with the person they want to be with or whatever. Like, you're not the only one in that situation. And and I don't think the chances of you finding somebody that is as slim, I honestly don't. What? Finding somebody that what? Lives? That's at, at, at the same level you're at right now, looking for a, a, a more profitable well, job I, I know or being career. In, being or in New York. Moving out of their parents' yeah. house. or Yeah, being in New York, you see a lot more people that stay home much longer because New York is freaking expensive. So, in that sense, yeah. But, I so, let me ask you. You women, this so you guys know, not know Martini, not knowing the guy you know now, right? And you saw him on paper. You saw his credentials on paper. Would you date him? I would go. Out, I would go out on a date with him and ask him. Yeah. Like yeah, what? What's your? Oh, no, when I, I mean, when I say date, I mean like not go on one date. I'm talking about I. Right, I did. This, well, <laughs> like I mean, on that date, I would then yeah. inquire like, what's going on with you? What do you have going on? And if I like the answer, I'm willing to work with you. If I if I like what you if you say, listen, I have a plan. This is what I'm trying to do. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, so he's not like, nah, I don't know. You know, I'm just chilling. No. So he want to be a rapper? That, the, like, he wanna, no. Why? That, that's not a good answer. That's a plan though, right? No. How's not a, how's not, how's it's not a, a plan, plan, but it's not a plan I'm willing to it's, go along with. It is a plan. It's a goal, but not a plan. So, right. I mean, so but it's not a plan I'm willing to go along with. with. Him saying, yo, I want to be a rapper. Well, I'm, I'm aspiring to be a rapper. So I'm aspiring to be a uh, disc jockey. What's the difference? They're both aspirations. Right, but they're not logical. It's not rational. What, you, they're not going to market a 40-year-old rapper that nobody's ever heard of. You're not going to make it. You're right. not going to... That's like me saying I want to be a ballerina. Like, really? You know what I mean? But, but, but the thing I'm saying, so like... so at, at, at Reasonable. At, a reasonable plan. Yeah, so, but I, I think... And this is my... And I believe this. At, at a certain age, you can't date potential anymore. You... Are you... I would think you want somebody that's established. But, or, but there's people that 
that work on Wall Street and say, ah, I want to make pottery. And they go make pottery. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, like I know somebody who he had some like business job and, he, and he's like, I really, or oh, human resource, maybe a job making good money. And he said, I really wanted to be a photographer all my life. He sat his wife down. He's really good at it. He, make, he takes beautiful pictures, takes beautiful. And he's like, I need you to carry the weight. Cause I want to start my photography business. Yeah, but I've known. I mean, I've known people that done too. But they've had um, like tons and tons of money and savings, so they knew they could fall back on something. He didn't. Well, he also. Had I a mean, wife. his wife had, had a, a job. Wife. Yeah, he had a wife. We're talking about this. But he wasn't really established either, and he didn't have tons but, of money. And, they, was, and it was, was a wife, struggle. Though. But I mean, he doesn't count because he's married. It does count because yeah. he's not. He's not a. She's take. She's supporting. She's taking care of him. I'm. I'm talking about a dude you're dating. So he. He's right now. So you met him. You met him. You guys went out Monday. Monday he wants to be, I don't know. He wants to be. He wants to be an architect. His plan is to be an architect, right? That's his plan right now. But he's currently doing. I don't know what he do. He's doing something next. So like, are you are you willing to deal with the dude with this dude's current potential? And he's and he just has been potential for the for the past two years. Like, how long does the potential last? It depends. It depends on what on what he's going for and what if the person says I th- I'm. Um, in my last semester of architectural school of however you do and I'm sending my resume out yeah I would work with that yeah, that's, yeah. Right. you have to be taking I actual I steps I think what you're yeah. missing though is that this isn't really just about money with Martini right and he thinks it is and, and I think, think that's the and problem you think it is because the fact of the matter is is that you just like my 21 year old niece if you really truly wanted to could throw out resumes you have enough retail experience and you can get the paper that you want to get just to have in your pocket for fucking shits and giggles or video games or whatever it is you want to do. The problem is, is that you have this plan that's perfectly lined out in your brain and you will not deviate for that plan. Not for me, not for the marriage, not for anything. I don't know why that is, but the fact of the matter is, is if you said, "Mm, fuck it, I'm going to do what I'm doing now, your secret projects... And I'm going to do this so I can get paper in my pocket. And you worked on the inside of you. You could date. You don't have to have your dream career laid out. You don't have to be like J.K. Rollins or whatever the fuck it is. Established and, you know, whatever. You could do what you want to do. It's just you. Like like what Charles and McFall was saying last week. What you put out is what you get back. I'm very happy that I don't see... Half naked big booty bitches on your Instagram anymore. Who? Martini. Really? Calm down. You like big booty chicks? <laughs> Apparently not. According to you. Who doesn't? <laughs> big, nah, yo, big booty chicks. They come in all come with all flavors and colors. Go We're getting off track here. Here we are. And we said big booty chicks. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's the key word. Um, the these jean brothers just triggered off everything. Um, you know, but you put up these memes. That sound like you just got put through the ringer. Like you're that you're that sixteen year old girl who breaks up with her boyfriend. We were just talking about this yesterday. The girls who like put up those like sad faces and like, oh my god, my heart was just broken and <laughs> men suck and all these things. And like that's cute for like sixteen year old girls who just got dumped and they want sympathy for their friends and they want to go out and have ice cream together. But you're a thirty eight year old man who hasn't been in a long term relationship in a hot minute. And your major heartbreak has happened in a very, like, large, like, in a different fiscal year. Like, long time, with different presidential election, that shit happened. Like, and you're still carrying it with you, and that's who you are when it's not who you are. Like, I don't know, if you want to put up your Batman shit or whatever else, if that's who you are, if you, like, love comic books and love this and love that and like these funny quotes, fine. But putting up these Sylvester McNutt things all the time... Like, the things about love are borderline. You know, like, whatever they are, like, you can love one woman, whatever it is. Things about how you love as a person, that's one thing. But the things about, like, the same thing I was telling you about our friend. When you put up things about what a savage you are, no man is going to really want to, like, invest in that. And no woman is going to look at your Instagram and be like, damn, like, what is he whining about? Men, women... Strong women don't like to see men whine. Like, you're allowed to be hurt and you're allowed to emote to them, but for a girl who's just like, oh, are you on Instagram? Like, if you start talking and she'll be like, 
down. Well, like, what? What's going on with him? Who hurt him? And then, like, you get down to, like, the 16th row, and you're like, God damn, how many weeks has he been upset? And, like, I'm not saying that the things that happen aren't terrible, but you got to bury them. You got to burn them. You got to purge them any way possible and start from a clean slate. And if it means going to get a job that you really don't like but puts paper in your pocket so you can even just afford a lifestyle where you can go out with your friends and do fun things whenever you want or just take a bus into New York City and go do fun events and not have to have the stress of like, uh, should I really do that this week because I don't know if I'm going to be able to get dinner next week or something. Like just for that alone, I would do it. It may not be the best thing ever, but, like, if you find something, like, semi-interesting, you know, you might, it might be worth it until you get whatever you're doing off the ground. But until then, you can't keep saying, like, this isn't what I want to do. This isn't what's going to make me happy. You kind of have to, like, facilitate something. Because you can't say that the person who you are in 2007 is still the person you are 11 years later, and you haven't done anything about it because... It just wasn't what you wanted to do or it just didn't happen. You are the only person who can make that happen. That's it. Just you. We can't, we can all sit here and talk to you until we're blue in the face, but you're the person who's going to have to be like, you know what? Home Depot is not the movement, but they pay $17 an hour and I need that in my pocket. So if I have to go there, throw my headphones on at night and stock shelves, then I'll do that because, you know, I want to go out on the weekend and enjoy my time with my friends and maybe meet somebody worth sharing some time with. But you also have to work on the anger in you. You have to burn it, let it go, something. Because you can't meet a girl and be like, let me tell you about what these bitches did to me. Like, that's not who you are. And I don't know how you get rid of it. Therapy or meditation, goat yoga. I don't know. Sometimes you just got to I can't change it. I can't change the past. Right. Nothing I can do about it. You know what I mean? But with something, everybody, not just Martini, everybody has to do is progress and evolve. Because to sit and say that's just who I am is bullshit. Like that's just how I am, or that we all do that though. Like, and that makes that makes you stuck. Like it, it doesn't mean don't be yourself or change for somebody, but we all have to progress. When you get like we all could possibly be single at forty five. It, it could be any of us, even if you're in a relationship. It doesn't mean it's gonna. We could all be and, and to if any of us sitting here. At 45, and that's just who I am. That's just what I do. Nobody's going to meet anybody. Like, you know, like, we all got to, and that's just what I believe. Like, some stuff we can't say is just what I believe in. That's that's who I am. That is some stuff we all can, like, I believe in God. That's absolute. I, I, I'm this, I'm that. But there's sometimes you got to be a little fluid. Like, all right, I mean, you know, like, you can see another side of it. You could try a little something new. You know, you don't have to be stuck in, that's just who I am. That's how I'm doing it. That's what it is. And everybody got to stop doing that. Like, you know, like you do it a lot, but like everybody does that. Everybody got to, people get stuck in their ways, especially the older we get. That's like, I don't know if it's a proven fact, but research shows the older you get, the more mm-hmm. stuck in what you're used to. I'm not going to stray from this. That's what I think that's what make it harder for people to find somebody. Cause we all start to get, even single, I mean, especially single, but even people in relationships, like, this is what I do. I'm not, not straying from this. And that, you know, that makes people stuck, but also you have to work on your confidence. Cause you know, like when you said you walked in a room and all the guys look a certain way. I mean, I remember seeing pictures from that party. Wasn't nobody all that. <laughs> That's coming from a woman. No, I, I remember who was there. Wasn't none of them all that. You know what I mean? But in your mind, you're like, oh, they all, you know, you Even probably. Still, they ain't, that has nothing to do with you. Man. Right. Yeah. And a part of you kind of, I mean, there's some women, if they walk into a Victoria's Secret photo shoot, we probably be like, oh, <laughs> you know, like sometimes <laughs> it happens, but sometimes, but we shouldn't. Me and her and Jen should walk on the set of a Victoria's Secret, like, what's up? <laughs> how you, do you know what I mean? Like, we ain't stick figures, so what? You know what I mean? Like, that's how we all should. You know, like, you shouldn't walk in there and shrink back because, like I said, wasn't nobody in there all that. When the, the rock wasn't in there. So, you know what I mean? So, you got to work on it because there's, there's a lot of men with money that get women with money because they have no confidence and they have no inner stuff going on. 
So it, it has to be, even though Osho's nuts, he makes a very good point that once you have money, people with money have the luxury of working on the inside. Who? Osho. Who's that? Who's Osho? It's an author. Uh, it's, I'm he, yeah, he was the book. guy that had the, the ashram in Oregon, Oregon oh. and it was all wild, kind of... Wild, wild, oh. Yeah. He, one of his books, I he makes a sound. point when you <laughs> when you've gotten everything on the outside. That's that's why it was a lot of rich people, Beverly Hills people, coming to him because they had the luxury of oh we can sit around and meditate all day because we have money we don't have worries, but they still had to work on the inside. And then he said people that are poor are have have don't have time to work on the inside because they're too busy being poor. That's why they and they don't sometimes people don't know they're poor. You know what I mean? Because they're so busy focused on it. But, and it's the same thing. It's like some people have dream jobs and have all these things, but on the inside, they're horrible. And then nobody wants them. You know what I mean? Like you could be the richest man in the world. And if you're not right inside, she's not going to want you. You know what I mean? So that's a, bi- a really big part of it. That's why I said a guy with a plan, a guy who has something going on. If I see he's a good person and he has something like he's, rational not a 40 year old rapper rational <laughs> like being Chilling rational and i'm like he seems like a really good guy he seems you know like he in the inside he has things going on he's in touch with his emotions he's respectful he, you know those things get you a long way you know what i mean um so yeah i agree with a lot of that <laughs> um and i don't know i um I don't 100% agree with you, Jen, that you have to, like, go out and get a job you hate just so you can, like, afford to do things. I mean, like, if you want to do that, that's fine. I'm not saying that you should. I know a little bit about, like, your long-term goals and, you know, like, I I know some of your passion projects aren't. Not everyone knows about them and, like, what they are. (laughs) Um, And by no means should you abandon them. Oh, Um, I definitely don't think that. Right. That, I mean, that, and I would never think that you would, because mm-hmm. you're cool people. Um, but, right. <laughs> <laughs> <Damn. laughs> um, so I'm not, I don't know, I don't want you to walk away with this thinking that we're encouraging you to, like, make yourself less happy, because it's not, like, I mean, you have this podcast, obviously dating is a priority to you, like, this, like, this subject matter is important to you. But it doesn't have to be everything. You know, it's if getting a shitty, like getting a well paying job that you hate just so that you can afford the date may not be a big deal. Like for me, it wouldn't be that big of a deal because I'm so like romantically jaded and afraid of dating that I, it's not a priority for me. Um, but if it is for you, it's, I don't know, it's, it's about, it's about prioritizing and whether or not, it's worth putting certain projects aside temporarily so that you can find someone. And then to be fair, once you have someone and you have a partnership and then there's more money coming in, then you can go back to those projects. So it's, you know, it's just about, I don't know, where where you put things on your list. I guess like saying find something that you hate just for the money is like not the right way to put it. But I, I, I guess like the mind boggling part for me is that like, if this has been the running problem in his head for so long, sorry, I don't like talking about you like you're not in the room, <laughs> in your head for so long, and for so long, like, I don't, I don't know what the hang up was. Like, I know for a long time, you like, you were trying to, like, contact the school and see what, if they can, like, help you find something, like, in the field and stuff like that, and that kind of fell through or whatever, but... I, I remember a point in time where I was, like, looking at for jobs, like, on Monster or whatever, and I was sending you some things, and sometimes you always, like, kind of have, like, a comment or an issue about where it was or what what they were doing, or you kind of shut yourself down right away and said, oh, they wouldn't hire me because I don't know how to do this, and I'm like, okay, well, same thing with kind of with dating, like, not lie and say you know how to do it, but, like, if you've played with that program or something before, you know, you could say, I, you know, might need a refresher course, but blah, 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 like, and... A lot of times your defense is to say, don't you think if I if I could find a job, like, I would have one by now? But, like, I don't know. I don't know. But I also don't necessarily wholeheartedly believe that you actually look for one, though, either. I feel like you kind of sit in your head all day about everything else. 
and then the next day comes. No, uh, I kind of agree with, with Judge, and I kind of agree with some of the um, points Jen made earlier. But um, like April. No. no, no, I'm just, I'm trying to trying to get on my thought. Yo, um, I don't want to say fuck your dreams, but it's <laughs> like what I'm what I'm saying is like have your dreams, dude. Like definitely at the at very end, of, you want to be happy with what you're doing, but in the meantime, you have to hustle, hustle. Like there's a, there was a time when I was down and out. I had I, when I I think I stopped when I think I, it was either XM or whatever my last job. I worked at the Department of Veterans Affairs from I think it was like eight to four, eight to six, whatever it was. Came home, took a quick nap. And worked freaking Home Depot overnight, and I hated that shit. But yo, I had I had to make ends meet, and I was the only I could make ends meet. But then in the meantime, I was still like doing what I had to do, looking for jobs, like, and that's why I saw I ended up where I am now. You know what I'm saying, not saying what well, I have my dream job, but it's a good job. But so in the meantime, you can still like I know I know some of your passion projects, whatever you're you're, what you're into. So I mean, we kind of had this conversation, but nothing's else stopping nothing stopping you from doing what you have to do. Like like, do you? Do you want to get out your you want to get out your parents' house? I'm assuming, right? Yeah. So if to do that though, you have to bust kind of bust your ass to get out that house. You can't do it hoping, or you can't do it and, and doubt yourself. I, mean, I remember. I'm not sure if you remember this, but a couple a couple years ago, I sent you links to Emmis. I I, I, I was I was at X. I wonder was I. I'm not sure if I was at XM at the time. I sent you to a link Emmis, Clear Channel, and some something else. They all had jobs. My thing is, go get your foot in the door. You know, so I have from I had a friend of mine who graduated from Central Connecticut. He currently works at ESPN now, but he started ESPN in the mailroom, and now he works in the advertising department. You know what I'm saying? And like Kevin Lyles, for example, he started he was an intern. He went from an intern to now he went he was an exec at um at Def Jam. So I mean, there's these there's these there are these, there are these stories that happen. So you have to hustle. You have to get in where you fit in. Do what you got to do. And nobody's saying fuck your dreams. But I'm saying, but in the meantime, focus on what's here and now. And you could also, I mean, you could also focus what you got out there, but don't, they could both, they, they could both coexist, you know what I'm saying, without stepping on each other. And as far as relationship shit, I, I completely agree with you. Fuck that. Don't date while you ain't got no money. I, um, if you feel you financially strapped, because that's a confidence thing. If you feel you ain't got no bread in your pocket, say you out with a girl you're, and you're, you're playing a little little free date. Her ass aside, she gets hungry. Like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Damn her hunger! Yo, you ever see the, you ever see half baked? I was thinking about that before. <laughs> yo, half baked. He went on a date, and yo, yo, he had to use count all his money in his head. And yo, trust me, yo, eight out of ten dudes do this. Like, yo, when you go out, you you count on money. Yo, she orders her food. All right, I checked. I left before I left. I checked my debit account. I checked my card. This is how much I had. So people do that. So, but I mean, not having money or not being where you want to be is going to mess with you. It's going to mess with your confidence. I understand that. This is why we want to go Dutch. This is why women do this because I will go out with someone and I'll order a cheap ass salad mm-hmm. because I know that he's not going to let me pay for it and I feel bad making him spend that kind of money. So cut us a break and let us pay for the first nah, date. It's but, fine. But I'm just saying, but sometimes like, like I understand what you said. I understand why you don't want to date in a certain situation. I have no issue with that, man. Or you can even say like, like you can say like, do you want to go for a walk or do you want to chill at the park or... You know what I mean? And pack, pack sandwiches. It, it's a right. <laughs> Make a picnic. I would so I would so like oh a picnic. God. I've gone on walks with for I dates. A, I those are some of the best dates I've had. It's right. just going for a walk. I have a legit picnic basket. Like you know what I mean? Like I and I think too that it's like the most respect I've ever had for a guy is when I invited him somewhere and he was like, I don't have any money. I was like, Mad respect to you for that. Like instead of oh, being gosh. irresponsible. <laughs> But then, but then, what happened after? Like, did you like leave? Like the no. date? <laughs> no, I mean, he told me before we but on the phone. Oh. Like, oh no, nah, I can't go. I don't have any money. I was like, you know, I'll pay for you. It's fine. Like, I had more respect for him. Like, I felt like he was more responsible adult for saying I don't have money than to get somewhere and like maneuver or. Oh, can like, you get this? Lie or you know what I mean or whatever. Like I have more respect for him for saying, "Nah, I can't go. I'm 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 broke this week." The lunch menu looks pretty good today. <laughs> That's supposed especially, to dinner, especially when I know he was broke from paying bills. He wasn't broke from buying like Jordans or whatever. Crap. He was broke from paying, and that's a, to me that's a different kind of broke. That's respect. Like we all go broke from paying bills. 
Like, you know what I mean? And I have mad respect for them. Like, so you think the majority of women think like you or the opposite? Because I think... I know a lot of women that I be know, like, no, I, I got it. Yeah. Like, and I know, I know a lot of women too. Like, my mother that was like... You can't lump all women into one Yo, category, Randy. You can't. I'm not. I'm Especially not. when my I'm mother, my mother face. told me. No, oh, my Yo, God. I'm, Yo, I'm not. He like, was mocking y'all. <laughs> I don't know about y'all mothers, but my mother was like, don't ever go nowhere without your own money. Yeah. No, yeah. I've, I've been, you know I've been I mean? out I've been out um, on dates, and, I, and I've heard the same thing. I have no issue with that. You know what I'm saying? But. I feel I like just, when she offered to pay, you automatically though she really doesn't want to pay. No, no, I don't. I don't think about that neither. Like I don't even think about that. You know what I'm saying? But like, if you offer to pay, think you I think thanks for the gesture. You know what I'm saying? But but, but if no, you but, can't but, pay because I'm a man and you're no, a woman. No, nah, but here's the thing though: if you if you never offer it, then that's that's when it, then that's when I start taking mental notes. You know what I'm saying? But if you, if you offer to pay, but anyway, offer that. But I kind of agree with you. I mean, I I agree with Jen's points, and um. I do agree with you. I do understand. I do understand why you're currently not dating because your situation. I mean, I get that, but I'm sorry. Mm. I I get it. I get that because if you you want to invite somebody somewhere and say I got it, I get it. But like you have to understand too that it's not all there is. Like you know, it's not all there is to dating. Sometimes somebody like she said the best dates is when she's just taking a walk. We just met at the park, and like sometimes I'll be like I don't know if he has any money. Let me eat. Or, or or I'll go pick up the food and I'm like you know I'm gonna go get me something from Subway you want a sandwich and I'll bring the food to not even like you don't even have to say nothing I'll just bring the food but quick story short story I met a guy once he picked me up very nice BMW we went out a little bit little bit I went to his house very nice house nice furniture it was small but very I was like, nice Wait, was this guy with no furniture <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have he didn't his bed mattress was on the floor. Oh. But he had living room, okay. dining room set all of that, big screen TV. The mattress was on the floor, BMW, dressed very nice. Our third date, his debit card declined. Then the next credit card he gave declined. And the next card didn't have any money. Had owned his own trucking company. He was the type of guy that a woman say, Oh, he uh, or or a man or anybody, he has his shit together allegedly. Mm-hmm. He didn't. He just looked like he did. Right. So to me, that was a lesson, and mm-hmm. everything that looked like it's together is not together. Right. All right. So, everybody, closing arguments. Unless you guys are, unless you two already gave yours, because I don't think you two did. That was my close. Oh, that was, okay. Everything, so I guess everything that looks like it's together ain't necessarily t- so so called together. Okay. You guys, you guys are good. No, I'm fine. Work on the inside, and you know everything. I think come she together. had the best insight because she. Because she knows you as a friend and as a... Boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah. So. Progress and evolve. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I, did, I have one mm-hmm. question, now. Where do you want to be in the next 365 days? And do you have a plan to get there? Yes. Okay, where do you want to be? I will most likely be... Uh, in the studio, know what I mean, uh, but not as a rapper. <laughs> in uh, in uh, voiceover work. So awesome. I, so I will you be would in be that. Amazing at that. So yeah. Nice. Okay, everything else. There's the one thing at a time. You're just doing. No, I'm I'm, I'm doing I'm doing other things. I mean, I'm still doing the writing thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm hustling, as you guys like to say. So, um, but yeah, that's that's yeah. I will be doing that. Do you have intentions or plans of moving out or? If that if that will, you know, if I could accrue money from that, absolutely. And if you can't, then yeah, I would have to <laughs> look for other means. But nah, it, it's going to be from those two uh, things, those two uh, pockets of uh, income. Wait, what was the second one? I don't know. Oh, the writing and the. Oh, and oh, the I studio. thought the second question. You I were was trying like, to wait, ask. did you say? I was like, what was the second one? Um, okay. Um, I thought you were gonna beat us up today. You did actually a pretty good job. No, I mean my, th- this was this was your episode. I wanted to I wanted to hear everything. It's not, no, I mean no, not you. Oh. Every it was everybody's episode. I wanted to be quiet because I wanted to have everybody say their shit as opposed to just going back and forth like last time. Bridget, close it. So yeah, closing argu- arguments, Bridget or oh, whatever. Um, I've known you for a very long time. Um, it was like ten years, something like that. Yeah. Um. And I agree, I agree with Jen that you're sort of in the same place now that you were then. You know, you, it's a, you have a different shitty job, 
but it's still a shitty job that you don't love. Um, I think and, you love the other shitty job, though. Yeah, there was a lot of drama, at, the, at least at GameStop. Wasn't the boss, like, really ratchet? <laughs> There's a lot of shit. Don't let it down. Um, to a different podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, so, I think... Like half of me wants to say that this stems from like your engagement breaking off, and she's kind of awful for a lot of reasons, mostly because she was in like the same position in life that you were, but for some reason her and her family decided that because you were the man, you needed to be further along in life than her. But uh, but mainly it was a uh, religion that that what you just said was secondary, but mainly it was religion. Okay, so the religion thing too, um. Which, like, okay, fine, whatever. You should move on from that. And I feel like, like, I don't know, maybe part of you has moved on and the other part of you won't catch up. I don't know. Um, So I think that relationship messed you up. But I think that there was something out of place before you even got there. And I think maybe that's what you're having trouble reconciling, maybe. I don't know. Would you agree, Jen? Were you, like, Uh, peaceful and happy before I came in and ruined your life? (laughs) (laughs) I'm just trying to remember. Um, There was one before you in 2006. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, (laughs) is there a way that you could, like... Can you separate me from the person you dated and be my friend? Uh, Sometimes it's hard just because of the stories that come up in... Uh um, you know, in, in this podcast and our conversation, because, like, sometimes I'll be like, wow, like, all this stuff happened to her with Brooklyn, because that's the only person, you know, that was associated with us. And I'm like, wow, all this stuff that happened, and and this is me, and I'm like, wow, all this stuff happened, and um, she still thought that that was the better choice. It wasn't about better, it's just... April of 2009, mm-hmm. I asked you, mm-hmm. if you and I were still together... Would you have moved in with me? So the Pisces in me was probably miserable with Brooklyn. And you I was were. Like, <laughs> and I had a, a fine time with you. Mm-hmm. And I felt very comfortable with you. And I asked you the question like hypothetically because I didn't, I wasn't super happy in the situation I was in, but I didn't really know how to get out of it mentally, I guess. And when I asked you that, you were like, no. And I was just like, well, then I made the right decision because this is the situation I'm comfortable did you? with. <laughs> In my head at the time, I felt that I did. Well, you were waiting for him. You did tell me that because you guys were always on and off. Like he was when he was with somebody, you were single. When you were with somebody, he was single. And then, or whatever, you know, you know for what I'm some trying to say. He thought it, he thought I was waiting for Mr. Harris to come home. And then you were like, you know, like, oh, we're we're both finally single now. I was like. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm still here. What do you mean both of y'all are finally single? You know, so I always felt like that's why that's why I when I gave you that little like shake, uh, Randy, you know, with that little eh, when when you said boyfriend, I, I always felt that I was more of a placeholder that you're waiting for. What's his face? No, I mean, I wouldn't really say that, but it's all in the past now. And if I would like to have a normal friendship with you where you cannot associate me with that and maybe just as your friend who you did a podcast with I just don't know how much healing that's going to take like we don't have to ever mention Brooklyn's name again he's irrelevant to my life like and even he is to a degree like things that happen like he's getting married and has a baby like there is a part of me that felt a certain way about that but not a certain way like oh my god why why wasn't it me it was more like, damn, this asshole has moved ahead, and I'm still trying to convince my boyfriend that marriage is a good thing. But it wasn't like, oh my god, it should have been me. I invested so much time and money and train fare into him. It wasn't like that. It was more just like, whatever. Like honestly, I see them together, and like, that's who he should be with. Like, she's been with him through everything. So to me, like, if he's happy, then I'm happy. For like, just everything like, happens for a reason, right? Yeah, that's a cliche, but it's true. And maybe I needed to go through that for whatever, and maybe we needed to be together for various reasons. And our friendship should just be what it is, you know what I mean? But if you could separate those two, that would be fine. And if you could figure out a way to 
I'm not saying you should be happy for your ex, your fiance, but no, fuck her. <laughs> Damn, Bridget. <laughs> I just got it. What happened to feminism, Bridget? I hope you're not getting any wrong information for you to say something like that. No. Okay. <laughs> but if, there has to be a part of you that has to say, I needed that experience. I'm going to grow from it. And this is how I'm going to grow from it. But you have to figure out how that is. And you have to kind of just put it in like a little keepsake box and be like, this is the terrible shit that happened to me. You know what I mean? And I'm going to throw it over here and I'm going to become this person who I want to be and take all your amazing qualities and put those out. Because you have awesome, amazing qualities or I wouldn't have talked to you in the first place. i had been like, yeah, keep it moving. But you have to show those and not show the side of you, like that bitter side. I, I, that whole bitter, hashtag savage shit, I, I don't, I can't, I can't get on board with it with anyone. Not men, not females, like, Life is too shitty in general in the world around us for people to like walk around being bitter and savage. Like you're you're not that person, so you got to find a way to let it go. That's it. Everything is meant to strengthen us, right? Even cancer weakens you and strengthens you at the same time. It weakens your body, but your mind becomes strong. Like everything is meant to make you stronger. Nothing if it doesn't kill you, it was meant to make you stronger. And a woman leaving you is not going to kill you, like. You know what I mean? Worst shit is going to happen to you in your yeah. life. Yeah. Just find another one. It may not be easy, but you just find another one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know you've had a bunch of um, not great circumstances for dating. And I know that there's like this really weird thing that happens where you date someone, you break up, and then the next person they date, they marry. Um, and I like that's, that's, that's not great. I, I can see that that sucking. But you're going to be that guy to someone. Like, I know there's like a, there's like you feel maybe you know, disheartened by it, but there was something that you didn't have that these women were looking for, but there's going to be a woman where you, you fill that piece that she was missing. Like it's, it's going to be a thing. It's going to happen. You just have to be patient and the angrier you get about it, the harder it's going to be to find that. You just got to go with the flow, let it happen. And, um, I, you know, I think it's going to be good. You just got to fucking relax, man. The energy you put out there, same energy you get back. This is true. And that's yeah, and that's undisputable, indisputable, whatever the word is. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right. Well, thank you everybody for that amazing talk. <laughs> Do you feel no, it's it's serious. No, I mean it was a lot of a lot. Everybody <laughs> said some really interesting things, and yes, some people might not have all the information, so they might. So I'm still taking everything in, even though I'm like, I'm already doing that. I'm already doing that. Already doing that. Did that, you know, and stuff like that. But I'm still taking all that information in, Mm -hmm. you know. So, um, but yeah, no. But thank you, everybody. I mean, Mm -hmm. was it, was this what you guys wanted? Did everybody get what they needed to get out? No one wanted to come out here and like, yeah, that could have like, yeah, it didn't matter. Uh Uh, But it it would, it felt. I mean, if it helps you, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know. But if you did something, do it again. Mm. Sometimes you got to do it again. So, mm. All right. Well, that is uh, the end of the podcast. Thank you for listening to us on Podbean, iTunes, Pocket Cast, Stitcher, and the all-new... Google Podcasts. Yes. Yeah, Google Podcasts. And we're definitely on there. And uh, it looks pretty dope. I don't know if... You, oh, you didn't download it yet? No. No, it's pretty dope. You sent me a picture, not a link. Yeah, yeah. Not, oh, my bad. <laughs> Um, because yeah, it just showed up on my phone. I was like, "Oh snap! Let me show it to her." But yeah, I not, heard about it. it's dope. It's, it it's pretty dope. All right, so please rate, review, like, and subscribe to us on any of the devices that you listen to. Uh, you can hit us up on uh, Gmail, bedlovebeyond at gmail dot com. Go to our website at www.bedlovebeyond.com. You can give us a call or text us at two zero one eight six two eight bed. That is two zero one eight six two eight two three three. Go to our Facebook, www.facebook.com slash bedlovebeyond. Follow us at Bit Love Beyond on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Periscope, and YouTube. And if you have any unsolicited advice for Martini because you love him like we do, please write to us. Yes, please write to us yep, at BitLoveBeyond at gmail.com. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you, April. Thank you, Randy. And thank you, Jennifer. You're All right, we will see you guys. <laughs>